This is the Marchant XL. It says Marchant there on the front. And let me show you the other side as well. Here we have a side with two uh, cranks, the main crank and a clearing lever for the counter. On the back it says Marchant again and there's also a, a plate here from the London reseller who sold it originally. This looks a little bit like a standard Odener machine. It is certainly used in the same way. And, um, but it has a, a very different mechanism, in fact. Originally, uh, Marchant, the, the company, was founded in 1911 by two brothers, Rodney and Alfred Marchant. Rodney was the engineer and Alfred the businessman and they were based in Oakland, California. At first they made standard Odener type machines. In fact their fir first model was called the Standard. And in, in 1915 they even made an electrically driven version of that. They were ve very early adopters of electricity. In 1917 they made the, the Pony model which was 20% uh, smaller and lighter than the Standard but it was still a, a normal Odener machine that used pinwheels. Unfortunately they had some uh, troubles with uh, patents, so they had to change the mechanism. And uh, their main engineer, Carl Frieden, he uh, came up with a, a new mechanism around 1918 called the Adapting Segment Mechanism. In a normal pinwheel mechanism, uh, moving a lever will extend or retract pins on a, on a gear so that once you've set the lever um, that gear has exactly as many teeth as the number you've selected. And when you then turn the crank that number is transferred to the rest of the mechanism. The adapting segment is slightly different. Uh, the setting the, a pin doesn't directly uh, change the number of uh, uh, teeth of a, a gear. A gear in here, inside here, has a whole segment with teeth which uh, can retract as a whole and it retracts while you turn the crank. So it, ex it retracts exactly at the right time so that it's in effect only has um, the given number of teeth that you've selected during the rotation. Uh, but it still eff effectively is used in the same way as a pinwheel. But uh, the main one main difference that you could, might have noticed it is that these uh, input pins they stay stationary. They don't move when you turn the crank. And that has the advantage that you can have these plastic knobs on top of these input uh, levers, making it easier to use. So it's, uh, other than that, it's fairly standard, except that the uh, carriage only has the main register, the counter that would originally have been on the left of the main register, has been put inside the main body here. Uh, if you move the carriage one step to the right or left you'll see that this pointer here moves uh, to point to the correct digit of the counter that is that will be affected by this uh, this next move, the next turn of the crank. Subtraction is done by moving counterclockwise, the main crank, just like a normal Odener machine. And uh, yeah, by uh, switching this to uh, a division, then the counter will start uh, counting uh, in reverse, so it counts the uh, subtractions. 
Uh, you'll notice I subtracted something to make this underflow. It, uh, it only, the carry only went up to here because the carry mechanism isn't inside the register itself. It's inside the main body of the machine, so only the digits that are in front of the main body of the machine will carry over. Uh, you should have heard a bell, actually. Yeah, there you go. It's uh, not very loud, and uh, but yeah, a bell would will uh, will ring when uh, yeah when the leftmost uh, digit in front of the body of the machine uh, carries over. So this this uh, crank here clears the uh, the counter. This crank clears the main register. The inputs can be cleared by pushing up this bar. Yeah, on this machine, unfortunately, the uh, the input lever for this the first digit has broken off. It's just about still usable, but uh, yeah, it won't be cleared by by the bar. This machine was made between 1923 and 1936. Uh, Marchant had uh, a great deal of difficulty in the de depression, so they, uh, before the depression, they uh, had uh, lots of variants of this machine. This was the, the basic XL model, but they had uh, keyboard machines as well that had a whole keyboard in front, in front of here. That uh, a full-sized keyboard, so that you could enter the number instead of moving uh, these pins. That version didn't have pins; it just had a register here, and you'd enter the number on the keyboard. And those keyboard machines were also uh, available to in uh, with electric drive as well. And they had many different variants of different sizes. And yeah, at one point they had 40 different uh, models, but uh, yeah, in the depression they had to bring that all the way back to only about two models that they were actively producing. One of them was still this XL, the basic model, and another was an electrically driven uh, machine with keyboard. In, uh, in around 1929, um, just before the depression, uh, Carl Frieden left uh, Marchant and uh, he set up his own company, the Frieden Company. But uh, after the crash, in around 1935, uh, Marchant uh, came out with a completely new uh, machine, new mechanism, devised by Harold Avery, and uh, they called those machines the silent speed machines, and those were very successful, and they continually used uh, variations of that mechanism until the 1960s. In 1958, Marchant was bought out by Smith Corona, the typewriter company, and then uh, Smith Corona Marchant, or SCM, uh, continued to, to, make, uh, yeah, to, to make both calculators and typewriters. Of course, in the 70s, when uh, electronics uh, came in, they couldn't compete, and then they just made typewriters from then on. So, this was the Marchant XL. Thank you for watching.